custom thing that was made for them, like with their name on it or something. Do you have, can you elaborate on that kind of thing? Yep, so the question was, there's all sorts of different types of people that contribute to campaigns. Some are the, the lower value person that's just going to buy, they don't really care about receiving anything, they just really like being a part of something. Um, I think those people are your friends and family, to be honest. Like, I don't think the general public spends too much time just, like, donating, so the group isn't that huge. It's more the people that you're connected with. And then there's people who like higher and custom stuff. I think it depends on your product, your business, and what you're offering. Um, so with rewards, it's probably the most personal part of a campaign. And while there's really clear outlines of like, don't have too many, try to have something for that $25 reward for your friends, family, and supporters who maybe can't afford to buy the product yet or the service. Um, there's really hard to do sort of rules around what types of products you should have because it depends on who your target audience is, which is key part of the strategy that I should have mentioned when you're actually planning. Have a target audience. You don't sell your stuff to the world. You're not selling it to everybody and anybody. Like you may have people outside your target audience that buy it because it flows onto them, but be really clear because you're gonna build all your social media following and your mailing list and you want that to be your target audience so, so that you can communicate in a language they understand and so that you develop a story that speaks to them. So I can't believe I missed that step. I'm all about target audience. Just be very specific with that. There's an, a question here about uh, authors, crowdfunding for authors. Can you cover that please? I personally haven't done any crowdfunding campaigns for authors, but I know that it's, there's a whole industry out there for that. Um, especially if people have already published a book and they have a good following already. Um, just like Veronica Mars did a crowdfunding campaign for their movie. So if you have a community around you who have believed in your work, so say you're a blogger and you've built up a following and now you want to write a book, if you have that community, then you can pretty much make it happen through crowdfunding. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head the actual crowdfunding platform for authors, but I know there is one. Pubslush? Pubslush? I think it's Pubslush. Yeah. Uh, Pubslush? Pub? Pubslush. Pub or pub? Pub. P-U-B. P-U-B? Slush. S-L-U-S-H. That, that, that might be old info, because they are yeah. struggling. Yeah, like I looked at that a long time ago. Um, uh, yeah, it's dead. Yeah, okay. So, so that one is no longer. I have a question about serial campaigns going Kickstarter, then Indiegogo. Do you know if there's a kind of theorem around the proper sequence? <laughs> I haven't done any campaigns like that personally. Uh, so it was about serial campaigns. So people who go from one to another to another. Can, can I offer a little bit on that? So we know of one that uh, went multiple times back and forth between the two platforms doing kind of tranches or, or examples. And the community response to it was very bad. And the reason for that was the offer was different between the two platforms and people felt they were getting scammed. Because they were tuning the, the, the offer to each new iteration, but because they moved, it felt like they were being slippery. So you have to be very careful to be kind of consistent in what you're doing. And back to what you said earlier, com communicate, communicate, communicate. There was no intrinsic benefit to one of the platforms or the other for this product. So it was just they were being a little bit opportunistic. Um, and you have to be careful of that because it can really backfire. What, was it a single product? It was a single product. Okay. And I think it's also, when you do your research phase, which is what I put in my checklist, you really want to research the different platforms and see who their biggest audience is and what types of um, campaigns they usually have going on. And then you want to try to find the campaign, like the platform that's going to be the best fit for what you want to do. Um, a lot of them now have a lot of variety, but Kickstarter, for example, really started around musicians trying to create albums, and then it just slowly moved into the other sectors. So do your research, know your platforms, but again, only 10% of your actual audience is ever going to come from your platform. And I agree, I think it does more harm than good, because the longer you're with the platform, the more you continue to advertise on that platform, the stronger the relationship is going to be with the platform and the people on it, and it's going to look consistent. Uh, 
well, what we wanted to do is we wanted to say to everyone that uh, we have a consultation with you as, okay. as a gift. And so we'd love to be able to uh, provide that uh, to someone when you're yeah. ready. I think yeah, we can. Is that about the time right now? That's about <laughs> whenever you're ready. I'm right. ready. Is everyone else ready? Who wants to win uh, time with her to go through your campaign? You better cheer. You better cheer. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Um, and again, changemakermarketing.ca. These are my contact details, um, but you can come and find me after. I can give you a card and we can have a chat if you have any questions, if there was something that I missed. Perfect. Thank everyone give her a hand. Thank you. How was that? Fantastic or fantastic? All right. We've got two more guys, door prizes. Canadian marketing team. Yeah, that's me. I'm that's the Canadian marketing exactly. team. You're going to be getting, yeah. uh, I do sales and marketing. Oh, yeah, thank you. I turn. Are you there? All right. I turn small businesses into money making machines using effective marketing plans. We're going to be spending two hours, about 120 questions, going through your business and finding out what action items that you can implement in your business right away when we're done. We're going to come up with an action plan for you. So it's about two hours, and uh, the value is about $2.99. So who's the lucky winner? Is Marilyn Anderson. Marilyn Anderson. Where's Marilyn? Okay, I need a picture. Actually, I think I know Marilyn. We haven't seen Marilyn in a long time. It's going to be perfect. Congratulations, by the way. And then we have another one coming up right away with a testimonial success. So the other one is uh, Tyler Buchanan from Testimonial Success. Uh, this right here is a training program worth a thousand bucks. He's going to show you how to uh, develop a, a complete standard operating procedure and how to get testimonials for your business. It's uh, pretty exciting and teaches you the, the marketing elements of it. Tyler, do you want to come up here? All right, who's the lucky winner? The lucky winner is Colin McDonald. Colin McDonald. Is there Colin McDonald here? Okay, all right, awesome. Colin's not here. Who's the next winner? Me. You. Who's you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jason Storm here. Jason Storm? That's a great name. Nice. There you go, Jason. your hands if you know what testimonials are. <coughs> like this? Yes. Testimonials are your client's stories. They're about what problems you solve for them. They're stories of transformation. Your client was all alone not knowing what to do. Then they found you and you provided a solution. These stories help you solve more problems for those same clients and they also help you get more clients so you can solve their problems. They're part of social proof which includes referrals, recommendations, endorsements, things like that and they're also the most underused tool in marketing. There tends to be an absence or underuse of testimonials in businesses so if you're using them at all you're doing what almost no other businesses are doing so you have a huge advantage right there 
Your client's stories help identify your unique selling proposition, they build your credibility, and they help you maximize your sales. So those are just some of the benefits. There's actually nine common business problems that I've identified that testimonials help solve. So if you've got this testimonial standard operating procedure, helps you put together the plan for using testimonials in your business and getting those great results. So that's... Do you have something special to give everybody? A card or something? <laughs> give it to them off the offer. All right, yes, I've got plenty of business cards with me and there's a coupon on the back. You get $100 off one of the services. It teaches you how to do the testimonials, following the marketing formula so that you make sure that those so you make sure those awesome words that your clients are giving to you are immortalized in a marketing way that they, they get attention, engage, educate, and offer it. It's, it's a real thing, guys, and it's under-leveraged. So use it. Guys or no break? Hands for break. Break. Five minute break. break. Okay, five minutes. Five minute break. So coffee is right under the coffee maker, and the mugs are in the drawer beside it. You need. Go for it. Thank you. 